Hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here, GuitarJams.com. Uh, I was going through a lot of emails the other day, and I was seeing uh, a few questions that were getting repeated over and over for the beginners out there. And it was, help, I can't switch my chords fast enough. And uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, and just some you know basic kind of guidelines to help you get switching these open cowboy chords as quick as possible. Um, also, you can always click the link below, and I have even more free lessons to give you. There's a link down there. You can check it out. Uh, but let's talk about the basic chords. There's a lot of different approaches that you can do, but one is to, like, let's say, limit yourself to just two chords and practice two chords, switching those two chords over and over. I find that uh, the more info at once, the the more likely you're to get overwhelmed. Like I would think uh, when a when I used to buy a chord book, for instance, and it was that thick, and you go through, and there's a thousand different chords in there, and it's overwhelming, and you kind of uh, feel defeated before you even start practicing. So one thing is you can just limit yourself in the beginning. Like, for instance, the most easy chord is an E minor chord. And the second probably most easiest chord would be A major. So if you're having problems switching all these different chords, start with just the two easiest ones and switch back and forth. Also, when you're um, doing something else like multitasking, um, you know, watching TV, uh, old joke I used to say is waiting for your pop tart, you know, different things. Sometimes food related, sometimes not. But what you can do is, you know, you're on the computer, you're surfing the internet, anything. You could just sit and while you're doing watching that show or, or whatever, you could just do the shapes of the chords without actually playing music. Just shapes of the chords. You know? It really pays off. Because it's all time put in. The more specific technique tips that I want to give you about switching chords, though, uh, are things that I've learned from guitar teachers myself. I've had some great guitar teachers out, you know, out there that are still teaching other people. And uh, some of those tips would be something like this. Uh, taking a, like a D major chord. Any of these chords, and I'm just using D as an example, is you can form the shape. And then something that's really good is, uh, you know, my joke was kind of like you had, you know, free spray and you're like, you know, you, fr you spray it on there and your fingers get frozen. So what you're doing is you're keeping the shape of the chord, taking your hand off, and then putting it back on and making the, you know, appropriate adjustments to get that chord shape right. You know, you could just literally take it a little bit off, put it back on, take it off put it on, so forth, and so on. You know, shake your hand out, try it with a different chord. And what you're doing is you're, you're getting that muscle memory going. Besides just always forming the chord, you're also, when you do that and you're trying to keep the shape, your body is, your brain and your fingers and everything are, are, are remembering it quicker than if you just formed the chord and strummed it. I promise, because I've seen it with a lot of students, okay? Uh, another tip is using one finger as like your locator point for that chord. So like for instance, a G major chord, it looks like this. Instead of like trying to get that whole shape down and memorizing that whole shape, and I'm talking about beginners, uh, think about your middle finger on the third fret of the low E string right there. Boom, that's my G chord. It's like what I'm targeting. Then the other fingers go down. A C major chord. Ring finger on the third fret of the A string. Okay? So watch, a C to a G. Target it. What was it? The middle finger. Oh. Now, the obvious goal is we want... start that way and you have to be a little patient with yourself but target notes keep the shape keep the shape keep the shape now uh one 
one other thing is that target note in, in particular, it's you want it to be the finger that's the closest to this portion of the neck. And that way, like for instance, a C chord, if I get that target note down, you actually, as you're strumming, you've got that split second as you're strumming down to get the rest of your fingers there in time. Like the G chord. You know, as you're forming it, even if it's a split second, I mean, we can, I'll take it. I'll take that split second. You know what I mean? So let's, let's recap uh, the tips. One tip is to limit the amount of chords you're practicing. Start with the two basic chords or take three chords and switch them in different orders. The next tip is to form the chord shape and take your hand off and put it back on. Do it with the chords, that'll help. Another tip, do some of these things when you're actually not paying attention. Uh, when you're watching TV or waiting for your Pop-Tart or uh, surfing the net, you can do it when other things are going on. That goes for scales too. Also, target notes for the chords. A D chord has the index finger on the second fret of the G. C chord, boom. G chord, boom. E minor. And obviously th this is just to get you going. These are tips to get you don't going. I don't do it that way anymore, but these really help, okay? All right, so just those are some, some things that I would tell you if I was talking to you in person and you asked me that. So I hope some of these ideas are able to kind of kickstart you and and just remember, everyone was here. I remember being in the same position, and I would say it just takes a little patience, but once you can play like four or five of those open chords without having to struggle, the rest is fun because you can play a million songs with those easy chords. So keep that in mind. Hope it helps.